this is going to be industry changing um, across the board. It's going to have uh, very visible enforcement, very visible. Welcome to the Payments Experts Podcast, a podcast of global legal law firm. We hope you enjoy this episode. Today, we are very excited to have joining us remotely, Steve Taylor of Taylor Brands. Steve, you've been a previous guest on uh, the Payments Experts podcast. We're really excited to have you back. This is kind of a um, kind of an update to our previous uh, discussion. There's a new uh, rule that has come down, um, ADA 36.402. Steve, thank you for joining in us. Would you mind telling our listeners who maybe haven't heard the first episode to a little bit about yourself, what uh, Taylor Stands does, and then we can jump into this rule. Yeah, so uh, we previously talked about our point of sale mounting, and don't confuse it with traditional regular mounting you see at a store. Um we work specifically in the space of the ADA, the Architectural Barriers Act, and with the ICT, which is known as 508 TC, ITC in the government. So both public uh, Title III and 508 space. Um, now, this new, uh, it's, it's really not new. It's kind of new and not new. The 36.402 is about alteration in building and i can tell you right now if someone doesn't have assistive technology at their point of sale card with their point of sale card reader at checkout uh they are out of building code and that's what's important to know about 36402 um, and that, that's exactly steve what we talked about previously which is that that wasn't seem, seeming to be followed. Businesses no. weren't required, even though they were doing all those other things, the re wheelchair ramps, railing, parking spots. You mentioned the bathrooms were always seemed to be very ADA compliant. And yet when it came to the POS, the point of sale, all of a sudden, no compliance. Yeah, that's exactly it. And that's why I said, why do businesses have accessible parking? and data compromising checkout for the user. And one of the problems that happens all over the country all the time, when someone is there by themselves in a wheelchair and they cannot reach that point of sale device, and let's say they're using a pin-based debit, they tend to hand the card to the cashier and have to divulge the pin, which is highly, immoral unethical and pretty illegal you're you're compromising that person based on their debil uh, you know disability right and that is discrimination it ties into another section called 28 cfr part 35 and so those two go together and so when you're talking about alteration that's what it's under in the ada and I had a good long talk with the uh, Department of Justice, Civil Rights Division the other day on this topic and had them just validate a number of things down the line. In alteration, let's say you're a new business coming in, got a brand new building, building code guy or gal has signed off on it, said you guys are good to move in. And let's say you're going to have your point of sale stuff brought in. Well, the second you put that mount on that checkout counter, it becomes part of that fixed element. That fixed element then requires ADA um, accessible mounting. And um, there's other mounting companies that have mounts that they say, oh, this is helpful with ADA. It doesn't follow anything about the ADA. They're just selling you, selling you a pipe dream. Uh, ADA is very more about that, Steve. It, it, in what sense? In what sense? Yeah. Does it have nothing to do with the ADA. Well, um, they're just regular mounts that don't do anything. <laughs> do they claim? Do they claim to be compliant with ADA? Are they making those sorts of? Uh, claims? Yes, yes. Um, 
they're I'm not going to name the company. They're very big in milk. Uh, a few years back, we were working with a company in Genico sent to us called the Room Store, based out of Minneapolis. And this guy, the head of IT, wanted to work with us, and uh, we were going to have this company go ahead and make a batch in Minneapolis because it was local. Their sales guy went in there, tore our stands up and sold them their own brand and said, oh, these are ADA. That really happened. Wow. And uh, I have photos from a Denny's, my local Denny's. If you were to use this thing from a wheelchair, it's a horrible mount. This thing would knock you on the head. I'll send you the picture so you can see them after this. Um and it, it would literally knock you on the head. Wow. It's not usable. And I was showing the manager my my mount, and he goes, when's that coming out? Well, we happen to be in a big production run right now. And uh, so as soon as it wraps up, I'm going to – they're buying it. They're going to put it in. A number of restaurants yeah. are around here. Um, it has to have the ADA operable part, which is the U-shaped pole. So slide downs, uh, arm extenders, any of that stuff, if it would work, I would have implemented it years ago. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. It, you have to have that U-shaped pole. It has to be able to dismount from its base. It has to get into the hand or hands of the card holder. Mm -hmm. uh, Visa. Uh, with their transaction device guidance, uh, 3.2, uh, section 2.6. Same thing. If you are going to mount, it has to be mounted for accessibility. If you accept Visa, it's right in their guide. Wow. You know? Yeah. And so when you tie everything together, these businesses have a big problem. But how you have to approach it for most businesses to understand is tell them in the first place they're in code violation with building compliance. Now, Steve, has that always been the case? Or are you saying that this 36.402 is bringing this more to the fore? Okay, it's it's being brought more to the fore. It's been around a long time, but there was an update to it in 21. So just a couple of years ago, there were amendments made to this. And this is a key part. I'm going to go ahead and read this because it's a, on my desktop all the time anyway. Any altered features of a facility that can be made accessible shall be made accessible. Uh, if providing accessibility and conformance with this section to individuals with certain disabilities, e.g. those use, who use wheelchairs, would not be feasible, the facility shall be made accessible to person with other types of disabilities, those who use crutches, you know, so there's various parts of the building. But that point of checkout, the second you set a mount on it and it's mm -hmm. not uh, an ADA style stand with the operable part and uh, the dismount, takes you right out of building code compliance and throws you right into discrimination. Wow. And that's a fact. I guarantee you. The only people, the only businesses that are in compliance are the ones that have our mounts. I guarantee it. Everybody else is out of building code. So, Steve, so let's talk about the, what I might say, you know, the real world or rubber hitting the road in the sense of how long is it going to take for this to trickle down to where people are going to actually realize, hey, not only, not only are we not in compliance with the ADA, we might actually be objectively discriminating with how we are setting up our POS. When is this, when are we going to start to see these changes? Do you think? I think as soon as the industry point of sale distribution companies get on board, they have reached to everybody out there and I'll tell you right now, I don't know what it is with them, but they don't want to touch the ADA. For some reason, they prefer to leave their customers vulnerable to lawsuits. 
is the best answer I have. I can't wow. find any other reason because they know about this. This is, it's reminding me of our, you know, our previous episode. Um, and by the way, Steve, I wanted to mention, and and for those listening right now, please do go back and watch our previous interview um, of Steve Taylor um, with, with Taylor Stans. Um, it was a great episode. Believe it or not, Steve, that was really one of the highest viewed episodes uh, we had to date uh, up to that oh, point. It was a great nice. episode. Very, very interesting. And as we discussed on that podcast episode itself, for some reason, this is not being talked about very much in the payments world. And it seems like, one, it ought to change. That There's no doubt about that. It, it yeah. ought to. The second question is, is, you know, now it seems like they're going to be forced to maybe finally, um, after all this time, how optimistic are you, Steve? What, what are your thoughts here in terms of being rolled out and, and people actually making these changes and, and actually really come into education? Uh, what's going to happen is we still have the NPRM. It was due out in December. A uh, little bit of a delay. It's going to be a couple more months. And I think once that hits the circuit, uh, things are going to get really, really loud out there uh, because it's going to affect everything from the countertop to the ATM, the fuel dispenser, kiosks, um, vending, you know, uh, so yeah. all, all of them. But um, Visa needs to kind of go, guys, we got this. TADG 32, you know, section 2.6 on accessibility, it even calls out the distributors, affiliates, subsidiaries, uh, ISOs, MSPs. And it says all of you are responsible to do this. You have to abide by the law in yeah. which the device is deployed. Right. You know, um, the, here's the exact words. Device vendors and acquirers are responsible for ensuring that all customer-facing devices adhere to any ADA accessibility requirements for the country in which they operate. And all country, most countries, 80 countries, something like that, have disabilities laws. And that's why they put it there, USA being the biggest. Right. And they tend to follow the USA laws. Um, because it's well structured, you know, when it when it comes to that. But it goes on, uh, and of course, the merchants are responsible too. And so we, I, I was talking with someone the other day, and they said, "Why would you want to sue a merchant?" I said, "I I personally don't. I built the fix to the problem for right. the merchant." I go, but the ones that do, I said, merchants, the ones in the know are doing this maliciously. They're avoiding it with malintent. The The small merchant, they don't know this stuff. And so it goes in where the ETA should have an educational series on this because right. they've got a lot of members, right? right. Um, have, you, have, you, have you talked with ETA? You... I, I talked with ETA back in 17 when I had a booth. Um, I think I talked a little bit about it in that prior video. Yes. And um, we ended up on a call with several people on the call. A few of the pause uh, industry distributors were on the call. Some, I, and don't take this wrong because I know you're in, in law. But they had some hack attorney on there that didn't know anything about the ADA, um, trying to give input on what's proper of the ADA. It, it was yeah. a joke. Yeah. And I go, I go, what is going on with these people? You know? And again, I'll say with an industry that prides itself on compliance, they're dismissing people, human beings, just because they have a disability. Yeah, absolutely. It's very discriminatory, you know, and well, it's uh, disturbing. You know, it's it's a it commentary. Is. It's a commentary. I hate to say it on the, you know, let's face it. It's a commentary on on capitalism to some extent. It's a commentary on uh, the marketplace. You know, it's um, yeah. You know, and it's it's unfortunate that that this happens, but that's why these regulations are put in place. You know, I think people when when all is said and done, people want to do the right thing. You know, but oftentimes, as you mentioned already, 
there is an educational element to this, Steve. I, I'll refresh our audience's memory. When you and I first contacted, when you first reached out to Global, that was a long time ago now. Yeah. And we had those yeah. initial conversations. I brought your uh, concerns, you know, to uh, Christopher Dryden, who's the founding partner of the firm. He's been in payments for over 15 years. Day in, day out, nothing but payments. He was completely, really unaware yeah. of all of this. And I don't say that to his, you know, of course, to his detriment. I'm saying that because it's, it is not talked about in this industry very much. And, yep. and that says a lot. And so we're grateful. You know, you mentioned that hack attorney, whoever that was. We pride ourselves here at Global Legal. You know, we want to do the right thing. We want to bring this to the attention of our clientele. Right. To, you know, because who are often, you know, there are many of them are the ISOs themselves, right? They are their payment yeah. providers, their POSs, et cetera. So we'd be more than happy to, and it's why we're having you on, Steve, because we really appreciate your insight and your expertise, your genuine expertise in this area. Can you talk about Taylor Stands? You mentioned you provide a solution. It's yeah. a solution that should be in high, high demand. Bitch, what, yeah. what do you bring, Steve? Tell us about it. So what we bring are a, a basic, uh, full-on, operable part using, operation using, um, let me back up a little bit. Uh, the ADA requires an operable part that abides by what they call ADA operations of no pinching, twisting, tight grasping, twisting of the wrist, and has a release pressure of under five pounds and that allows the device to come off its mount which is tilt and swivel also but so the person can get the card reader in their hand use it privately use it safely and have good screen interaction so and just just to note i'm going to step outside the ada a second and hop into PCI requirements. Mm -hmm. And in PCI point of interaction, the POI under pin transaction security requires that a person in a wheelchair, as a good example, is able to do pin entry using their body. Now, can you use your body to shield for pin entry? with a regular mounted device, uh, you can't do it. Not easily, a, yeah. It, there's no way to do it. Unless you're, yeah, hunched over the thing completely. And I, yeah. I offered to throw somebody on top of one once. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah. that's the best I can do with this. Yeah, store. absolutely. You know, so again, when you've got not only Visa saying, hey, get it together, you've got, PCI saying, hey, get it together. You've got the ADA. You've got the Architectural Barriers Act. You know, uh, it's it's airtight. You can't get around it. And eyes remain closed. And look the other way. The biggest frustration for me, uh, and by the way, we do custom ones too, um, on the stand with the bases. Uh, there's a lot of chains out there I know that have, you know, a few thousand mounts, right? And they've got particular drill hole designs. We go back in and re, you know, we'll have uh, undrilled bases that we can match to their existing. So mm -hmm. that's another thing we can do too. But we have to keep the very uh, strict requirements of that U shaped pole with the operation requirements intact. It has to be able to dismount off its mount. And of course, you know, stay secure on the mount per PCI requirements, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the two go hand in hand. You just have to make it, like I say, usable for people in wheelchairs, little people. Uh, and another one, here's a real strange one. Uh, and I learned this from a Walmart cashier. And she says, we get uh, tall people. They're, they're just tall with very bad backs and poor eyesight. And because the screens aren't exactly large, uh, they have a hard time working with it. And if they have big hands 
and you have that rubber guard, pin guard around it. Yeah, yeah. Their dexterity or larger hands can't work it properly. And sure. The, the the problem that runs in there is that PCI, if it was tested with that rubber on there, it, that machine gets disqualified from compliance if that rubber part is removed. But yet it needs to be removed if you're going to deal with that section of the ADA with dexterity problems. Yeah, or larger hand. Sure. I, Steve, I've experienced it myself. I'm sure you have yourself. There's certain, yeah. you got to get your finger in there. You got to kind of look to the angle. You know, it's doing its job. It's trying to shield your pin from being mm -hmm. seen by those around. But sometimes it is. It, it, depending on the angle of the of the machine, you have to kind of angle your finger in there, make sure you're not hitting the wrong button, you know, the wrong number, et cetera. Yep. And I can only imagine for someone who has physical limitations with their hands or, or, you know, size or something of that nature. Exactly. So, you know, the industry also, and, and the businesses, and especially these compliance officers, who are they? Why aren't they concerned about compliance? I don't understand that. Um, I should have had most of the industry reach out to me by now. I've been doing this long enough. And, uh, it it just it you know it it doesn't sound fun to get a seventy five thousand dollar fine from the ADA, does it? No, it doesn't. And that's that, I think. But Steve, how many examples do you know of where that fine was actually levied? Um, there's a there's quite a few printed over the years in the archives on the DOJ. Mm -hmm. They're in they're of, they're in, in terms lawsuits of payments. Yeah. In terms of POS, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the okay. the big the last big one, I think there was something called shop shop and save or something um, up in Pennsylvania area. They they have like three hundred grocery stores, and they got hit real hard. Um, it was it was a big fine, yeah. real big fine, and um, I remember talking with the attorney general in. Was it New Jersey or something? Because maybe they had some stores there. I'd have to go look in my email archives. And I was talking to her about this stuff, and it, the lawsuit had already ended. It was posted on the ADA. And she goes, Steve, I never knew about any of this stuff. We're talking about a state attorney suing that didn't know the stuff I know. Right. And so she goes, I forwarded that over to the DOJ, you know, because they need to know about this, too. And I said, well, it's in their rigs. I hope they know about this. <laughs> you know? You'd hope so. You, uh, I'd hope so. No, nothing surprises me anymore, Steve. Uh, I can do that. That's that's true. You know, generally, people that call themselves experts, well, it's questionable anymore. Um so I see him on TV news all the time, and I don't really. Anyway, I'll leave that one alone. Yeah. But um, I've got, like I say, a decade in this deep, deep, deep in the trenches, and it's what I specialize in. Yes. You know? So, so. Steve, th that leads me to to my next question. And, you know, we, we you had that conversation about merchants, right? And who wants to sue a merchant? And and you made the, the point yeah. that no one does. And it's true, especially when we're talking about the mom and pops, you know, these the smaller entrepreneurs. Because um, really, you don't, at least I have a hard time putting blame on them. Uh, they're trying to run a business. Yes, I'm yeah. sure you're concerned, but they don't know their options. They, they might not even know that these types of uh, POSs uh, exist, right? That right. They, right. It depends on what salesman comes in their door uh, yep. and presents the POS options, which, as you say, is uh, other than Taylor stands, it's probably not ADA compliant. But I guarantee it's not. You guarantee it's not. And the, you know, the merchant, I would argue in most cases, probably doesn't know any better. So my question is, what I'm getting at is, how how do we bring more education? It, it is, do we have to go to not just the vendors, but also I'm thinking of the ISOs, the ones that are making these deals in the first place to get the processing up and running to get the POS into the store. Um, is that where this education needs to happen? Mm, kind of. Uh, PaySafe uh, in February 
did a blog and they talked to, they got the information from me and they published it and then a couple of weeks later they did it in their global newsletter and pointed to me and one of the the problems that happened in that blog in that newsletter was Paysafe said, oh, we're not selling these or distributing these, but here's a good resource to go learn about it. Well, that just killed it right there. Yeah. Completely yeah. killed it. Right. Take yeah. us first, Steve. What, what should have happened? What should have happened? Paysafe should have been selling them and made the announcement. Yeah. And someone big like Paysafe, you know, one of these big... Uh, movers in in the industry they make a change like that i i think you'd see a domino effect it would have been a domino effect completely and they could have really got ahead of the game because once this hits you know there there's a lot of point of sale uh check out lawsuits there there they happen all the time uh by those ambulance chaser type um ada Mm -hmm. yep. Well, yep they go around they go around right. looking for violations and send somebody in to to be affected by it and that's their that's their case exactly and a lot of people go well why don't i hear hear about it I, uh, that's because they were intimidated to uh just settling out and that doesn't make newspapers right right because they don't want to be embarrassed in the news about it yep and so that's where those lawsuits are. They that's stay in the shadows. Yeah, sure. It makes sense. Yeah. But to go out and purposely hurt a small business instead of trying to help it. I mean, I'll, I'll be frank. And if you got to cut this out or beep it, do it. But it pisses me off. Yeah. To go out and intentionally hurt a small business like that. That doesn't know. Right. Especially you know? when. And here I'll give you a plug, Steve, especially when there are affordable, effective, compliant, ADA compliant, POS, uh, is it alterations? What was the word you use? It's Alteration. Alterations that you provide that can make, I, it sounds like, Steve, you work on a custom level as well. You can yep. fit pretty much any scenario, huh? You'll any work. scenario. Who's your your ideal customer i take it it's not the liquor store on the corner i take it you're because you make these in a, a large volume uh to some extent who who's your ideal clientele steve man there's 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 two kinds here three kinds um and they're all equal to me uh, i sound like a politician when i say that but it's true uh you've got the mom and pops because they're they're so much bigger nationally, you know. So C stores are uh, especially the chains, the C store chains, the Circle K, uh, okay, yeah, Wawa. Mm -hmm. um, then the big box brands. Um, so Best Buy, Macy's, you know, uh, Target. Yeah. Target would be a big one. Uh, of course, Walmart, you know, sure. but Walmart's Walmart, you know, you know what do you do? <laughs> they, they, they <laughs> yeah. Their own rules, yeah. Right. And then you have about 15,000 commissaries in the military. And you have a lot of veterans, a lot of disabled veterans using those commissaries that's, and, that's and exchanges. Point. That's a great point. Yep. So right now, they're all out of building code. Wow. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, this was just, in fact, next month, I'm supposed to be doing a rather large podcast with my uh, group in D.C. Um, and that's, of course, with the person that was appointed to start the ADA uh, by George Bush. And uh, he's kind of the king of the ADA. Mm -hmm. And um we're going to be talking about the upcoming MPRM and other various acts, uh, aspects of all this. But it's time, you know, to get this um, really out there and 
ask the question to the distributors that deal with the ISOs and MSPs and businesses directly, what is it that you have against people with disabilities? It's a tough question. It's a fair question. It is a fair question. It's a it's well, I should say it's a fair question with a tough answer, right? They they've got to they've got to face this. It, yeah. It, yeah. It's it's overripe. Steve can you summarize for us? Um, you know, greatly appreciate you coming on. And I want to um give you an opportunity to let our audience know where they can find you, how you li- would like them to contact you, et cetera. But before doing that, sum it all up for us. What where are we today? Where are we now after this 36.402? And what do you see in the coming months? Okay. What I see in the coming months are all those ADA litigators I just got through talking about, mm-hmm. they're going to get educated on my website, not by my own doing, but this arms them to go after tons of businesses when this NPRM comes out. And the payments industry, if they don't get off that high horse and get in the game, their own customer base are going to be getting hurt. And yeah. uh, especially, like I say, when that NPRM comes out, and we are already starting to talk with building code, you know, cities and counties mm-hmm. and states mm-hmm. all over the country right now, and getting them up to snuff on this. So it's on some checklists and some aren't. Um, this needs to go universal with it. And again, you know, the 36402 ties in with the 28 CFR Part 36 for discrimination. And, you know, these these uh, other mount makers with large business bases, they're not going to tell them about us. They're not going to because they don't want to lose business. Right. Uh, yet they won't work with us either. Doesn't make any sense to me. No. You only got to get one. And if you have a multi-lane, it's, you know, lane one and lane five. Right. right. What's the big deal? Plus yeah. any individual sales service or return calendars, but it's not that big a deal. Mm-hmm. And you get that 50% tax credit. So a couple hundred bucks saves you what? 75 grand. And if you're in California, we talked about this on that last podcast, the CalFin 13082. It tells you straight up that the device must be removable from its mount, from its unit. Yeah, yeah. But it has to have that operable part with all the operation requirements that we address. And it's like, I, I just, I can't comprehend how people can't comprehend that. And um, have an ADA sticker on their door. They have their ADA parking. They've got their ADA restroom. Right. right. But now, let's, now it's now it's time to complete it. Now it's time it, to complete it. This completes the circle. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Steve, I, I feel like in many ways you are, you know, I, it's not a great analogy, but you're the canary in the coal mine. You know, and I feel like you're saying, hey, look, guys, this is coming. If they act on it now, you know, they can, I uh, imagine, like you said, once this is actually enforced, prices are going to go way up because then they're really going to have to. Right? Well, it's already enforced, actually. Everything's enforced already. Right. What, what's going on with the MPRM is just an update in language that's going to expand upon what's already here. I see. I see. That's a big deal that's coming because it's going to affect anything now here's the way the access board looks at anything that has a car a credit card reader or debit reader in it and it, it they look at it as what's called a transaction machine so very different from calling it a pause terminal and when people go prove it to me show me okay it's transaction machine in this language that's what they call it right you know, well, yeah. but everybody's so used to just saying pause machine or pause terminal. Yeah. Right. 
And uh, so the language has is going to be updated, and it's going to cover EV charging, uh, fuel pump, mm-hmm. uh, like I say, vending, um, kiosk, and uh, obviously countertops going to be re reinforced. You know, uh, with a little better direction, and uh, a lot of the problem is people are told that reach and range is all they need for their uh, mounting, which is a huge farce. That's not true. That's a construction standard. Mm-hmm. That doesn't help anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, you anyone's going to have the logic to build the low counter that they're told to do. Yeah. You know. Um, but that doesn't help the person with limited reach and strength now, does it? Right. Or like you talked about before, we the uh, blind people who are coming into these businesses, et cetera. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just, Remember the taco shop? Yep. Told you about that? I, yep. I They have that Clover device, and Clover has no tactile pen. State of California, you're supposed to have tactile. It's written in the law. And uh, the DMV here, California DMV, yeah, big, they're the the worst violators I've ever seen. It's wild. Yeah, it really is. And uh, of course, the USPS also. Wow. You know, they have them super high counters. You got to be yeah. nine feet tall to use those. Right. right. You know, I'm not nine feet tall, only six feet tall. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, but yeah, so you can reach me at uh, taylorpos.com, point of sale, not the other POS point of sale so taylorpos.com uh my number is 623-200-3087 uh feel free to call me talk to me and uh see if we can help you out and steve it's been uh awesome thank you for joining us uh so quickly on short notice this has been a great update to the previous episode uh Ladies and gentlemen listening right now, um, this has been Steve Taylor joining us, uh, a friend of Global Legal Law Firm, and we're just we're really thankful for your expertise, your knowledge on this very important issue. Please continue to keep us updated. Um, we wish you the best uh, with your endeavors because your endeavors are going to actually help people with disabilities, and that's yep. really what this ultimately comes down to. So we're, we're very grateful for your time today. You've been listening to the Payments Experts Podcast, a podcast of Global Legal Law Firm. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Payments Experts Podcast, a podcast of Global Legal Law Firm. Visit us online today at globallegallawfirm.com.